Hello, welcome everyone to our uh, sixth chapter of Power Power Ups for Kids APAC. And uh, yeah, so just give an introduction about Power Ups for Kids before we pass it to our beloved speakers. So the Power Ups for Kids is for bo for both kids and as well for the parents. So why the kids would like to uh, would love to learn Power Apps? Uh, why they need to learn Power Apps? It's simple to build, as you can see. We have uh, kids ranging from eight to 14 years of old, having building these cool apps and using Power Apps, and you know they can build for themselves or for the schools, their uh, their clubs, etc. And you can boost yourself as a young developer. I know, like our uh, speakers today, and you can absolutely do this. There is no doubt at all. And what is it for parents? So it can be used for many business use cases. If you already have Office 365, you will have the Power Platform uh, environment to build the Power Platform already. And it's going to be similar to Excel formulas and PowerPoint designing stuff, right? So you can build apps for phones, tablets, and computer. So without further ado, I'm going to give a quick introduction to our uh, first speaker, Anshu Kumari. So Anshu Kumari, OK, let me just move on the slides. Yeah, sorry about that. So by the way, just a quick introduction about myself. And uh, I am uh, myself Jiva. I'm a Microsoft MVP, and I'm based out of Singapore. And we have uh, Elan here. She's also a Microsoft MVP, and she's based out of Australia. So our first speaker, we have Anshu Kumari. So Anshu Kumari, she does a lot about the dot around the blockchain, Power Apps, and .NET. And Anshu is based out of India, and she got uh, pretty in interesting stuff for us today. And over to you, Anshu. So hello, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, you are. OK, so let me just present my screen. Oh, can you stop presenting your screen so that I can? Because I have a PPT to show. Let me just share my screen. Is my screen visible, everyone? Yes. yes yeah. Okay. So hello, everyone. I'm Anshu Kumari, and I welcome you all to today's session. So before I start, I would like to say a huge thank you to the Power Apps for Kids community to have me here today. I'm so grateful. Now, first of all, before starting the session, I would like to have a small introduction of myself. So who am I? So I am a global CEO at Blockchain Kids, which is an organization that aims to eliminate child trafficking by building a blockchain that can sustain on its own and help save every child in this world from child trafficking. But to do so, we need your support so that together we can eliminate child trafficking and make this world a better place for children. Now, these are the different platforms to which you can connect with us. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, our YouTube channel, Blockchain Kids, or you can also check out our website, which is blockchainkids.net. Now, Coming on to today's session, why is it worth spending your time? Well, that's an obvious question, right? What value are you going to generate after this session? Well, after this session, you will have a basic knowledge of what Power Apps is and how it works. To be more precise, let's talk about our today's agenda. So first of all, we will be talking about what is Power Apps. Next, we will talk about why Power Apps. So by why Power Apps, what I mean over here is that why you as a student should be using Power Apps or what are the benefits that you as a student would get by using Power Apps. And next, we will be talking about the key features. Then we will have a demo where I would be making a quiz app, which will be very, which is both very useful for teachers and students. So do stay tuned till the end. And then we'll be having the most interactive part of the session, which is the Q&A. So first of all, what is Power Apps? So Power Apps is a tool that helps you create custom apps by leveraging many of the features of Office 365 and Microsoft Power Platform. But what sets Power Apps apart from the other offerings of Microsoft is that while it can be used by all those tech savvy people, all the developers, it can also be used by non-technical people. And just like its cousin Microsoft Flow, Power Apps also successfully brings I would say the power of process automation to a non-technical audience. And like if you have a particular process that requires different components of the Microsoft universe, then power, an app based on Power Apps has the potential 
to bring all of that together into a one handy convenient experience for your user. Now let's talk about why do you need Power Apps as a student? Well, I myself as a student would say that Power Apps has helped me a lot in my studies. One of the apps that I made was a Sanskrit dictionary and that I also made a French version of it. And both of them helped me a lot in my language classes. And the third study related app I'm going to make today, which is the quiz app, which is going to help both teachers and students. So these are the different benefits that you would get by using power apps the first one is speed so power apps i would say eliminates many of the time consuming elements from the normal development process and replaces it with the intuitive drag and drop system which makes it both easier and more efficient to work with next is easier app creation so when you're talking about power apps with apis libraries and functions Creating apps for students can be quite daunting, but with Power Apps, most of that coding part can be handled by dragging and dropping, which, may, which makes it very, very easy to create apps for children. Next is low cost, and I believe that I don't need to explain this one, as if you go check out the plans of uh, Power Apps, you will see that's very pocket friendly for students. Next is easy standard connectors. So many um, many of the st students when they are trying to build new apps the biggest barrier they have is how to connect to data well thanks to microsoft power apps connectors they provide you with different connectors or data storage services to easily connect with and use with power apps next is office 365 integration so congratulations you got the data from your app but where should the data go and that's where the role of Office 365 integration with Power Apps comes in. It helps you take, take out and take in data out of SharePoint, Excel, and any other Office 365 app that you might be using. Now let's talk about the key features of Power Apps. So Power Apps, the first one is Solution Maker. So till now, you would know that Power Apps has a very intuitive drag and drop system. So when you're working with Power Apps, it's just like you are cooking a ready to cook meal. You have all the ingredients, you have all the instructions. All you need to do is put all of that together and your meal is ready, which means your app is ready. And next is easily connectable with other services of Microsoft. So one of the uh, feature of Power Apps is that you can connect it with other services of Microsoft like SharePoint, Excel, Dynamics 365, which, and which helps you to bring more uh, diversity in your apps. Next is Canvas apps. So when you're working with Power Apps, there are total two types of apps, the Canvas app and the model-driven app. The Canvas app is just like you're uh, taking elements for your app and putting it onto a canvas, like designing a PowerPoint presentation. but when you're talking about model driven apps, they are more, they are generally used when you have more complicated or sophisticated apps to make and they require a, quite of a good amount of knowledge. So I would say that if you're a beginner, start with Canvas app and when you are working brilliantly on Canvas app, you can move on to the model driven app. Next is user friendly interface. So as I told you, Power Apps has a drag and drop system. So with user, which gives it a very user friendly interface as it, first of all it's efficient easier and it, with this drag and drop system i would say that power apps is the perfect dis definition of a user friendly interface and next is sharing so like for example you have a co-worker or a cloak or a classmate you want to share the app that you made but thanks to my uh, power apps power apps also has a feature that you can share your apps with other people but the catch over here is that the app can only be shared to the people under your organization. And with that, we completed all the features and now let's move on to the demo. So I'm going to go into, um, just, yeah, I'm going to go on Google. So this is the app that we would be making. This is a quiz daily app, quizy daily app, which is more about taking quizzes for both students and teachers. So let me just show you how it works. So we're gonna start. The first question is, are you ready? So yes, and you can change these questions and MCQs. I will tell you how to, but first let's see how this app works. 
and the meaning of adverse is making something easy for someone. So we will say no. Next is the formula of water is S2O. Yes. Apple is a fruit. Hi, yes. Uh, I'm just sorry to uh, stop you in between. So are you sharing uh, any app? Because we see only yes. blank screen. Oh, let me just check. What do you see? Like, I don't know. That's from my side. Just a second. Let me check. No I, I was seeing a blank white PowerPoint slide. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, wait, so. wait, wait. Oh, let me check. Boris, take your time. No stress. Are you able to see it now? Yes, now we can. Awesome. Okay, Thank so you. Let me just start from the starting. Okay. So this is the app that we are going to be making. It's a Quizzy Daily app. It's an app based for teachers and students to take quizzes. Like if you are a teacher, you can use this app to give quizzes to students. And if you are a student, then you can make groups and share your knowledge together with making quizzes, which is more interesting, fun, and helps you in studies. So I'm gonna start this app. Are you ready? So yeah, this. So we have a total of five questions in this. So these are just basic questions to just show you how the app works. And the meaning of adverbs is making someone something easy for someone. No. The formula of what is H2O? Yes. Apple is a fruit. Yes. Ego means the good opinion that you have for yourself. Yes. And there you ha there you have my result 25 on 25. So I'm going to tell you how I have made this. So we have a total of. Let me just close this up. We have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screens. So I made a total of seven screens out of which the first screen is the I would uh, the first screen is the welcome screen where you start where you welcome the user. This is the first screen and then I have this uh, different five screens which are related to the questions and the last one is the result. Now you can make the screens as per your demand, but over here as it's just a test tab, I have only added five questions. So to make this screen, you have to first go into plus. So this plus sign over here, it actually helps you insert all the components that you want in your app. So like the, over here, you can see the different components that you have. So over here, I've used the text label. So the text label is like you can add, write the text in it and it will be just like a printed text onto your screen. And then I've used the button over here. Now in the button, I have also written a code which is or in the on select property. So what is the on select property? So by the name you can see on select, which means that whatever the code that I'm writing under this button will only ex be executed when I select this button. So the code over here is navigate to question, which is the second screen question. So navigate to question means that when I click this button, when the user clicks this button, this uh, the screen should be changed to the question screen. Which is the first, uh, which is the first question screen. Next, we have the question screen, which is so over here. I've used again a text label for the question, a radio button. Let me show you how the radio button is. Radio, a radio button for the options. Now, for the when you choose a radio button, you often only get like two of these. But now, how can you bring four or five or six options? So you have to just click on that radio button, select the items properties. And then write this code and inside that you can add the different options that you have like mine were four can determine exception 50 no yes sorry five mine were five options so i added that and then in the button i this is where the main code is so i used the if else condition what i used to said over here is that when the radio button is the radio one button is selected the selected value if it's equal to yes then set the score to five for every question over here i'm giving five points to the user so if the if the answer is yes then uh, set the value to five if it's not then set the value to zero so if you get the answer correct you're gonna get the five get the score of five so after whatever score you get we would reset the value of the radio button to the score that you have and then we would navigate to another screen and show you the another other question. So let me just go on to the other screen, which is the question one screen. So now over here, I have again used the text label, which shows the question, then a radio button in which I have five different, um, I would say, options can be determined exception 50, no, yes. So, and in this, 
I have also used the same and in the button. So this is also where the main code is written. So I have again said the same thing that if the set the selected value is no. Now what is different over here is that if the selected value is no, then the set score will be the uh, score that you before had plus five and else there will be no addition in the score and after whatever score you got it will reset the value of of the radio button to whatever score you now have after addition or not adding any score and then you will be navigated to the next screen and the same happens on the three other screens you again i have used a text label a radio button and then in the button i have again written the same the same code that take the radio three selected value write write whatever the correct answer is and if it's a check if the answer is correct if it's yes then set the score then set the score plus five which means the score that i earlier had on radio two set plus five to it and then again reset the value to radio three after addition of the, or if even if you're not even if you not I have not added any score then reset the value to it and then navigate to the question to another question and the same is the same story is for the other two questions and in the last question what i have did is i have used the button and i have over here in the last i have written that navigate to the result page which is this one and over here i have again used the text label to write result and in this i have written score and slash 25 which is more about what i'm saying over here is that after these four questions the last reset of the radio buttons value would be on question four so whatever value is of the radio button on question four it will be taken as the value over here and then i would be writing it with slash 25 which will hence give me my score and then on the button i have again written that navigate to screen which means that once the user is done with the test if the user hits the button or next then the user will be again sent to the home page to like have the retest or if the user wants to close the app it's the user's choice so that was all i hope that you guys liked it and do let me know if you have any questions okay so i guess there are no <laughs> so let me just was my sharing stopped in between um you could no i could see your no. screen still that's good yeah okay so that's a very good one i feel so maybe how long have you uh did it take you to build this to learn all these formulas and build this up it's uh, like to learn all of this uh actually i do a lot of things like i learned blockchain.net as uh, one of you told as jeevan told that I have I do a lot of things from blockchain to data science to machine learning, C uh, C sharp, Python. I do a lot of things. So uh, to learn learn different technologies, I I because of these learning these technologies. When I was learning Power Apps, it only took me like it only took me one day to create this app. And when I was learned, I was a beginner. It took me one week to learn all of it. So you can see how good it's for children. If I can learn it in one week, you too can also. Because I'm also a student. You guys are also a student. To all the audience over here. Well, I feel that's very impressive. One day, even G1 takes longer than that. <laughs> yeah, I do take longer than that. Yeah. G1, <laughs> but I feel so. What kind of materials do you use to learn this? Like, do you have anything you want to share? Like, one day is very impressive. Is there like, do you follow blogs or do you use Microsoft Learn? Um, like, what's the best uh, way? I... To I I would say that you can either use the, all the Microsoft documentation. Let me show you. Um, when you yeah. go on to Power Apps over here, if you, my screen is visible, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So when you go on to Power Apps, oh, I don't know what. Let me just. Okay. So when you go on to the home page of Power Apps, over here. Power apps. So here in the learning section, you would see that there uh, are a lot of there is a guided learning, and when you get started with this, you can get a lot of different you uh, different things of how you cool things that you can learn. 
I have used this one, and you can also follow C Sharp Corner blogs. And I'm also a, a panel speaker for C Sharp Corner, and they. the people in the c sharp community write great blogs you can also use this even for making this app there one two things that i was messing up because i hadn't used power apps for like um i used it last month but after one month i wasn't using it because i had exams mm -hmm. and everything else so i i was i followed their blog and they were do they were they, there was this blog written by some person he was also a microsoft mvp and under i would guess 10 minutes after reading that whole blog i was able to create this app so you can see how good uh, blogs they write so you can definitely check out the c sharp corner blogs on power apps and you can also use this microsoft guided learning program maybe if you could share the c sharp corner blog on the okay. chat that would be very useful and show us this amazing like learning this in one day building a quiz app i mean a, a lot of people have asked Be like how hard or how easy is it to learn Power Apps? I guess you just prove that it's really easy to learn Power Apps, and even for kids to just follow these materials and stuff, it seems very easy to do. So shouldn't be a problem for anyone who wants to learn, right? And even one of our co-speakers, uh, Zara and uh, Zara, yeah. she is. Uh, yeah, both of them are. I I'm literally. I will. I first of all, I feel that I was the youngest when I saw them. I was like. Oh my God! They can do it at such a age. Then what am I doing? I Means they. Are, I when I saw their profile, I was like, "Is it true? How are these girls doing such great work at such a young age?" I was. I'm literally very, very, very inspired from them. It's literally an honor to speak with them. You know what? All you people today presenting is very inspiring for me. Okay, you guys are like in your. Teens and ten years old is still not even teens yet. You make me think what I'm doing in my life. <laughs> so awesome job, Anshu! Very well done. Congrats on that. Um, and I also very impressed with all the other works that you have done in blockchain. I saw your website. Th those are very amazing stuff. If if you want to share all your blogs and stuff, yeah, 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 yeah. You can do that. You can different. So I will just uh share the. I will just open this. one and you guys can definitely i'm sh uh, sharing it right now you guys can check these different links out by scanning the qr code or all or, or, or typing this in the platforms this is my linkedin account twitter uh, instagram uh, sorry, and youtube sorry, Ashu, we have not seen the screen okay oh, wait 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 yeah. resume share um, are you able to um, see now No, I'm still seeing you. Yet, yet to come, uh, yeah, yet to come. Actually, I'll also to add one point uh, with Elaine. Actually, Anshu, like uh, uh, you are speaking to the uh, session in the with the little kids. Actually, so basically, like uh, uh, apart from blockchain and child traffic, fine. Like, uh, can you articulate in other way what you do exactly? Uh, like, uh, so that the kids can understand and they can get inspired more on you. Apart okay, from the power up session, I'm saying like uh, the previous. uh give a introduction quickly about you uh where it where you have started and what is currently um, like uh, you are making it uh, actually can you just give me a second uh, can you just mm. just give me a second i will come back from the meeting because i'm not able to hear the voice i don't know what's happening just give me a second all right uh, i'm sure you know what i'll hand it over to zara and zenobia and then no no just zara a second can... just oh, a second okay. give me just a second okay Elaine, you are able to hear me? Like, uh... yes, I can hear you. Yes. Okay. Good. Actually, like, yeah, because actually, like, uh, even like, uh, Akshita was uh, asking. Yes. Actually, like, uh, are you able to hear us? Hear us, Anshu? Now, how about you? Yes. Yes, I am yes. able to hear. Are you able okay. to hear me? Yeah, yes. we are able to yeah. hear you. What we were asking is actually like uh, you were articulating yourself as an uh, like uh, blockchain and uh, more into like child traffic buying. You uh, like uh, more information you given actually quickly. You given you can give us uh, more info. uh to the kids because actually you are speaking to the set of kids actually who are completely unaware and they are new to you uh, possibly like we are also interested actually i am interested to know about you more actually apart from the blog can you like just to, you can share the blog details one other side other side actually apart from that you can also give a quick intro about like where you really started will be helpful for the okay. kids also to understand okay. so i 
Okay, so I started at the age of nine. Uh, and I, at the age of nine, I didn't exactly started with power apps. I started with power apps at around 11. Yeah, at the age of 11, but at nine, I was doing coding in C sharp. And by the time I was 10 or 11, I learned Python and then I learned power apps. So my journey in tech, I, I literally before I was nine years old, I never ever wanted to learn tech. I was I couldn't even the computer that we have in school. I couldn't even switch on that correctly. I would not even know how to work in task task paint. But when people say that when you have a cause, you can learn anything because willpower is something that is more important than talent. Because when I was nine years old, like our teacher, because at the age of nine, you are generally said to read newspapers to get a good reading uh, ability. So I was I was said by my teacher to read newspapers and while I was reading it like I read for one week and most of the time I would see that there are a lot of news for chi about child trafficking and. I as a two as a child, I won't understand what child trafficking is. So I asked my dad. He explained me everything that how kids were abused, they, how they were uh, put into such a uh, put, put into such uh, conditions and they are said on the roads to beg and they are just taken away from their parents. And I was really hurt because I I am emotional child. I believe that willpower is more important than talent. So I was really heartbroken. So I asked dad that someday if someone takes me, what will I do? So I asked him, is there any way to help? Is there, can we do anything? So obviously my dad is also in tech, but means any person will not give a lot of idea to a small child, right? Because he never believed that he never like in the starting when I poked him that I want to do something, give me an idea. He wasn't like that. So I researched myself, got something on Google as a nine year old. I can't do anything. So I researched on Google and then I uh, then I asked him that uh, that can we use technology? So he told me about blockchain. Then I again studied about it and then I as I grew up and learned more about it. My dad was he supported me a lot. So when, as I grew up, I started understanding that if I want to do bring a big impact, if I want to build something and the solution that I will be building is find my kids. It's a blockchain that can help children that can help eliminate child trafficking. So as I grew older, I asked uh, I started understanding what the real world needs were. So I understood that I can't I alone can't do anything. I need to get kids with me, make an organization and start. Finding people who are just like me, so I got my dad became my mentor. I had I have a group of people and you kids. If you or you also want to join our community, you are very, very. I would be very happy to have you in our community. So do check out our website blockchainkids.net. I will just add it in the chat box and. As I was doing all of this, I started understanding that alone blockchain can solve the problem. I need to learn more technologies to integrate with blockchain. And that's how my journey in technology started learning C sharp, Python, blockchain, power apps. So that's how the whole story goes. So everything I'm doing has only one cause that I have to do this for child trafficking. I have to give sessions to connect with people. That's very amazing. Um, I'm sure very inspiring. Um, I, I would love to talk more, but then because we have other presenters, I think we need you to come in another session to just talk about all this stuff. For now, um, I'll just hand it over to Zara and Zenobia, but I'm sure if you could share all your links in the chat, that would be really awesome because I think a lot of audience today would be very interested to know what you're doing and how they can actually help this child trafficking um, things that you are campaigning on. All right, so Zara and Zenobia. Hello to you now. Hello everyone, and thank you for attending this session on Saturday. Uh, have you shared the your video call, uh, Zara? Like we are not able to see your uh, yours and your sister's face actually. Mm -hmm. Just sharing. Can you see the yeah, screen? Yeah, we are able to see. Go ahead. Is my screen visible? Uh, yeah. Yes. Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending this session on Saturday. 
Thank you, Anshu, for sharing some great insights and fun quiz app. Also, thank you for saying such kind words. And those who are fasting in the month of Ramadan, Ramadan Kareem. My name is Anubia and I have with me my twin sister, Zah. Today, our main focus is to talk about how to improve application design, create cool controls, and make user experience better, as well as make your development experience better by using components. But before we deep dive into the subject, I wanted to share something I learned recently about the importance of having good design. So first, let's talk about why design is so important. So I was browsing and found out that there is a chance that 50% of users can stop using your application, be it mobile, tablet, or web, if they don't find it easy to use or nice in colors and themes. That made me think that if I can build an app for my class of 20, only 10 will use it. And I'm sure like me, you do not want to use so many users. So to improve the app design, I found there are four key concepts we need to remember. Information, the first one is information architecture, also known as IA. It is all about satisfying the business strategies by designing the application or the site's information structure. The major role of it, of the IA, is to provide its users with easy navigation no matter which browser they are using. It's about using the maximum options and space in the screen. An example would be that if a user is using a different mobile set, you know, some have big screens, some have small screens. So the look of the application should still be the same. Interaction design is all about creating the conceptual design with which the users can interact with the application. This interaction includes various elements, such as color, font, icons, images, motion, sound, space, graphics, and etc. It's like using bright color for application that is for my age group or using nice icons and images so it looks cool. Usability, the third, so the third element, can be referred to as user friendliness as well along with figuring out if the users get the information they want by using the application or visiting the site for the first time. And if the application or website is easy to navigate, the usability also comprehends the ways to handle the errors. An example would be Power Apps Designer. It's so easy to use. It gives you easy instructions of what features placed where. We need to make sure that users should not struggle to find it hard to use. Visual design of the application or website is like defining the company's brand. Finalizing the visual design can affect the user's behavior and hence it is the most important component of the UI design. It's not only about selecting the best images, colors, icons, fonts, but also identifying the appearance of the application impacts the interaction of its users. In a few minutes, I will introduce some cool power app controls. A slider, a cool control in which you don't need to write and there's very less chance that you might get some number wrong. A date picker control, on the other hand, is a control with which you can specify a date without writing it and it has better usability than writing it down. A, a toggle is a control that can Turn on or off by moving its handle. You can change that little text over there to false or true or something else. And with a toggle, you can replace lots of things like drop downs, radio buttons, and it also looks much more cooler. A rating control with which users can indicate a value between one and a maximum number that you can specify. It's a smarter version of writing how many stars or rating something has. It also looks more professional, given that more, most people use it to rate how good something is. Now let's see some old and new controls. A toggle replaces both a drop down and a radio button because both are old ways of selecting a certain thing. 
a slider can replace a text input box because just by putting a simple formula as you move the handle you can see the number appear in the label the rating control can replace a text box too because you can select the star instead of writing it out so first i'm going to start with one star also don't forget to select it or else your stars will keep changing wherever your mouse goes so i'm going to select two stars a rich text editor control replaces a text input box because it gives better usage and a user can make it and user can edit all its formats like you can make it normal text headings and you can change it to bold italic you can underline it you can even attach a link and you can erase everything you've done so far except the words now we're going to see a custom control that I have made. And we're going to use some advanced controls. So here, I am going to create a new experience using a container. So wherever a container goes and you put something inside it, for instance, that thing can only stay inside it. You can customize it by adding controls to it, resizing it. It can, it can also hold a set of controls and it has its own properties too. And then by, uh, you can customize it by adding controls to it, resizing it, moving it, hiding it, and making other changes. Now we will put the controls that we need. And I'm going to fast forward this a bit. Now, I'm going to add an icon. Oh, wait. Now, I'm going to add two icons, an up icon and a down icon. Oh, wait, let me just fix the color first so that I'm able to see it. Now, I'm going to add two icons inside the container, which are up and down, to expand the container, expand the expander, and take it up again. So I'm going to make it seeable. And on its own select property, I will put a formula which will <clears throat> let which will set expand collapse expanded collapse to true so i'm going to put in this simple formula with which I'll need to fix some things in the other rectangle or expand your content so that when I press this button, the rectangle and label is available and you can see. I'm going to set its visibility to true only if only if expanded collapse is if and now i'm going to add or fix this and now i'm going to add a up one so that i can take all of i can hide these this rectangle and label again so i'm going to make it seeable again 
And now I'm also going to put that in the same formula for its on select property. And don't worry, it's a very simple formula. And it's literally giving you what you need to write. An update context can change the value of a variable too. And on its visibility property, I, for the last one, I put it to expanded collapse. Now for this one, I'll put not expanded collapse because I need it to only be visible when the expander context or content is available. So now I'm going to fix the rectangle's height. I'm going to put a formula here. If function that if expanded collapse is there, then I will change it to its normal one, like as you can see right now, but else I'll just put it to zero. And I'll do the same. With the visibility of the labels too. So you just have to put in this simple formula which will check that if expanded collapse is there or true, then this will open. Or else, if it's not, then it is not in height will change to zero. Now, I'm just going to say changes something. I think I got confused in both of the icons. So I'm going to just change the down ones do not formula. And I can do to expand it collapse. So now, as you can see, I've made an expander by myself. Now, as you can see, I added a temperature control and I put in some details of user. Now, it, you, as you can see, it's so easy to make. You just need to have the right formula. Changing the guard over to user. Hello everyone, and and now I'm on. Um, hello everyone, this is Zara speaking. Now I'm going to talk a bit about components and on um, and the customizations. What are components? Components can use advanced features such as custom properties and it will enable complex capabilities. Components are useful in building larger apps that have similar control patterns. If you update a component def definition inside your app, all instances in the app reflect your changes. Components also reduce the duplication of efforts by eliminating the need to copy paste controls and improve performance. Now we're going to and see a com how to build a component inside an app. First, be sure to check your environment before you get started. Click Canvas app from Rank and give it a good name. It's 
going to take some time to get <clears throat> ready. As you can, um, you can see a component next to screens. If you click new component, you can build a new component. You can build a new component for your app. Let's first set the size. Let's add a rectangle for our head. So right now we're going to make a simple component, not so much formulas or so much text or so much drag and drop. We're just gonna do simple component. And as you can see, making a compute component is not that hard. It's all drag and drop and formulas. You set them right, and there you go, you have a component. Let's, let's set it up first. As you can see, this is our component. This is our component. I'm going to go to insert. And as you can see, if you click custom, you can see our header. How cool is that? For now, it's just it's just a simple one, but later on we're going to get started with. It. Let's see how to make it available for other apps. Let's extend the usage of our component from one app to two or more by using the component libraries. When you create a component library, you're, 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 using, you're making components in a place where you can use them again and again and again, not only in one app, but others. It's In this case, I'm going to in show you how to make a component library and, and how to use it in different applications. Let's size it, let's size it up. This may happen, but don't get too worried. It's just a simple size. So I'm going to make a header. It's not going to be as simple as it was before, but I'm going to make it a bit more advanced, a bit more professional. So first, I'm going to use the user full name. Hello. And user brackets open, brackets closed dot full name. And there you go, my name is on the screen. Let's let's set it up. This will give login user details. This may take some time, so I'm going to go to the other screen. The purpose of custom property 
that we're going to put in this is that it can allow the user to change necessary parts of the component. So the custom property that we're going to add in this is going to give a, a brief a brief into intro to custom properties. It can help to it can help to change the, the screen title for every screen. So I, as you can see, I've put in my email or as as you would know it, the username. Now let's add in our custom property. First add a label and put it wherever you want. Position it right. And add in the properties you want. Then if, if you click away, you can see new custom property. If you click it, this, this will open up. For the display name, I'm going to do screen title because as I've told you before, this custom property will help to change the screen title on each screen I'm using. Now I'm going to add today's date In time, in today's date. It's a very easy formula. It's just today, parentheses. There you go. Let's change its text to more um, to 24 so it's more visible and it's, and it's in the format to white. There you go. That's a component. See how easy? Okay, so now we're going to use it in an app. As you can see, the component library has been, has come there and now we're gonna make a blank app. In this, I'm going to show you how to connect the component library to the app. So first, you can first you can see in the old there are two ways: the old way and the new way. The old way would be to go to custom and then select import and go through all that trouble. But the new way is select insert under preview and get more components under the insert. Now, as you can see, my component library is there and I can select my component. Select import and all the all, all the component libraries that you've made, all the component that you components that you've made will come under library components in insert. If I click my component one, there you go. My header is right there. Isn't that cool? And now you can even see the screen title at the side. You can, if you want to change the text, you you can go to screen type and screen title. This in the left navigate in the left, and change it in the text to screen title. Let's do that right now. Let's change it to home screen. So when we, when we put, um, let's change the name of our screen to home screen and then put, uh, and then change it. And, and then we, if we select our component, we can see screen title. I'm gonna name it home screen. As for you, you can name it anything you want. Let's make a new screen. So it's visible that uh, that the component can be used over and over again without no difficulties. 
let's change our the screen name to screen two. Okay, so there you go. See how easy it is to make custom properties, a component, and it's and it can be used in every screen again and again. Before we conclude, I would like I would like to show you quick tips that will help in the customizations. I'm gonna check my environment and go and go to apps. I'm gonna go to the component app. I'm gonna edit it. This may take some time. There you go, our app is there. Okay, so as you can see, there's a theme function beside new screen. There's the standard themes and the office themes. For us, let's just select rows. The header will get some time to um, some take will take some time to get used to to the team, but it will be fine otherwise. We can even add a background image. Let's add in this, and as you can see, you can make it fit, fill, center, or whatever you want. Now we're going to now let's build more apps. Let's try to make more and more apps to help us with power apps. And I really enjoyed with this. I really enjoyed in this session. It was really fun sharing how to do this customizations. It was very fun indeed. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Hi everyone, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask if you have any questions. Yes. I have a question. I'd like to hear it. Where did you find these ideas? blogs and YouTube channels we channels we used to watch lots of power apps um, power apps uh, videos so um, so we when we saw that they were using the themes differently the background images so we got this idea okay any links you can share with us okay sure why not okay it was a nice session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashuda. Thank you so much, Zara and Zenobia. Another great session from you both. Uh, it was so, I, I, I was actually just, you know, uh, going to this, I mean, listening to it and uh, I, I have got some key takeaways from that presentation on the containers and it's such an, an, another great session. So by the way, uh, if you know Zara Zenobia, guys, Zara Zenobia are the world's youngest power platform certified professionals and they are based out of Singapore. Great session, both of you. Thank you. Welcome. And uh, thank you everyone for joining uh, today on the weekend. I know it's a, uh, and people who joined from India, it's a pretty tough situation out there. And uh, despite that, you managed to join and uh, support us. Uh, kindly take care of yourself uh, you know, and I'm actually uh, another important announcement I'm um, actually sharing a link here in the chat you can see it's a link for the power platform learn so if you can enroll here and register here you can you're going to get the updates for all of our upcoming events on the power app for kids APAC and in the other region as well so just uh, register to this one to not to miss any of our updates uh, if you have any of your have any questions, please feel free to reach myself and Eden. Uh, we're going to drop our email IDs as well here. And if you have any questions, you can also reach out to LinkedIn 
uh, as well. 